Hi guys. Um, yeah, Tony here, Ultra Pro. Um, just wanted to show you guys about the uh, Atari Jaguar. I got a new game for it today and I just thought, why not make a quick video about it? It's a great little machine. It's fucking weird, but it's a great little machine. So I just thought I'd show you guys what I think about it and tell you a little bit about it and show you a bit about it. The games that there are on it that are classics and that should be owned, I think, by pretty much everyone. So I'm just going to show you some stuff about it. So this is the actual machine. It's a very strange machine. It's quite, I don't know, nouveau riche, I suppose. Kind of bizarre design. They wanted to sort of be a bit edgy, so they gave it a kind of futuristic kind of feel, but it actually looks like just a big fucking weird kind of button. I don't know. It's just strange. It's quite large. I mean, if anyone knows me, they know that I've got giant hands, and so for it to be comparatively large like that, it's quite a large little machine. Um, just a quick overview of the console. It's made by Atari, who, if anyone who is as old as I am, and I say old, and I don't mean old, I'm only... 29 but if you think that's old then fair enough screw you <laughs> uh, I'm not old but I'm old enough to remember Atari we had an old Atari uh, console when I was young one of the old 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 ones from like the original I don't know the original Amstrad or I don't know ancient games uh, you know it's just one of those joystick ones and it just ping pong and all that shit so Atari made those and Sega and Nintendo took over the market in the late 80s, early 90s. <coughs> and they decided they wanted to come back into the market. They decided they weren't going to give up without a fight. And um, they were going to give it another try. So they decided the best thing to do would be to make an all-beating all console that would be the most powerful console ever. and More powerful by a million miles compared to what else was on the market. Uh, and they touted it as a 64-bit interactive multimedia system it's not a console it's a interactive multimedia system apparently um, they say 64 bit they really mean uh, hardly 32 bit because it's nowhere near as powerful as like the Nintendo 64 or the Saturn or the PS1 um, this is a little guide I've got I'm quite proud of this it's part of my collection um, gives you an idea yeah, that's 64-bit right there. That's 64-bit, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gets my juices going, that does. So, um, yeah, the uh, the great thing about this is that it's actually got a guide to Alien vs. Predator, which is one of the best games on the console. I will be showing that to you in a little while. Um the funny thing about this book is that it tells you about the console and it tells you why Atari think it's the bollocks. And it goes into great detail here. I'm not going to read it all out to you. You can pause it and read it back to yourselves. But basically, they went mental. They basically said it's the most powerful thing ever. You know, it's 64-bit graphics, 64-bit um, architecture. It does this, it does that. Um, it's got this many graphics, it's got this many pictures, this many times... 100 times as much data as at one time than 16-bit games and twice as much as 32-bit games. Yes, because 16-bit games are 98 times less powerful than 32-bit games. Yes, that's how it works. So anyway, long story short, they completely fucked up the market, market in. They told everyone it was the most powerful, most amazing console of all time, and that's why they decided to sell it for about 400 pound or dollars or whatever which at the time was probably about twice as much as any other console um, this is my Jaguar collection this is the reason why I love the console so much some really great games on here just quickly give you an idea Alien vs Predator, Cannon Fodder, Cybermorph, yeah, 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 Doom Raiden Rayman, Super Burnout, Syndicate, Tempest, Theme Park, Wolfenstein and Zool just got a replacement of this today, thank God, because this copy was really shit. You put it in and it just wouldn't work, and you'd have to wiggle it around in the slot to get it to work. And it one maybe one in ten attempts it worked. So I bought a new copy. Yay! I'm very happy. Anyway, I'm going to show you Alien vs Predator very quickly. 
try and keep it quick because my battery's running out. But yeah, the brilliant thing about this console was that okay, it was shit in terms of 64-bit architecture. It had two 32-bit chips in it and everything, but it was actually a nice little console. It failed miserably. They only released about 50 games for it. But the nice thing about it was they kind of admitted a mistake with it. They kind of admitted a major mistake. This is the controller. It's a nice size. It's nice and big. It fits my hand really well. I've got massive hands. Those pathetic PlayStation controllers just aren't good enough for me. Which is why I'm with the Xbox and you know Dreamcast and Jaguar. The controllers are nice and big. This stupid bloody thing... Is a deep dial pad of some kind from like a phone. It's almost like a mobile phone keypad. And nobody has any bloody clue what it does, really. Um, I prefer this one because the colour of the D the buttons is slightly different. Um, but yeah, so what they did is they thought, right, we've made a real cock up there. The controller's crap. So what we're going to try and do to redeem ourselves is with most of our major titles, we're going to re release these little things, which are called controller overlays. And they're actually a really nice touch. And you slip it in here, and it actually makes the buttons mean something. It makes the buttons understandable. It tells you that these are the weapons that you can use. You press that to use that weapon. No, no use for these two. Strafe, strafe, map, reset. And it's just a nice little touch. And there's one for playing as the alien. And there's one for playing as the Predator. So we're now just going to have a quick go of Alien vs Predator. Try and keep this nice and quick and simple. I mean, please allow for the fact that the graphics are now... You're looking at... 16 years old. So when you see this, don't turn around and say, Oh, that's shit that is. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Because if you think about it, 16 years ago... It was actually quite ahead of its time. Oh, bollocks. Yay. Right, I'm just going to try and show you for about five minutes. Hopefully my battery won't die, but if it does, I'll just say now, thanks for watching. Um, Yeah, I love that little floating symbol of an actual Jaguar in the middle, like, people don't know what a Jaguar is, so they thought they'd t put an actual picture on there. I don't know. Strange, strange behaviour. Right, so, this is one of the most, sort of, genuinely atmospheric games that I've played for a very long time. I've played a lot of games and a lot of games try to scare you and they don't really do a good job of it. This one does quite a good job of it. If you're playing as the Marines, which is what I'm going to do, you will be genuinely scared while you're playing this game. Until you find the motion tracker, you will be pissing in your pants if you've never played it before because you walk around and you'll turn around and there'll just be an alien running up to you silently and it'll just beat the crap out of you. And it's actually quite a strategic game because if you kill the aliens, you've got to watch out where you kill them because their blood will damage you. So I'm going to be quiet now and just let the game sort of speak for itself. What on earth got a hold of this guy?
That wasn't good. Shut up, you pussy. Only a bit of acid. Oh fuck. Fuckers. Yeah, so this has been my little video about the Atari Jaguar and Alien vs Predator. I think it's a quality little game. You guys probably think it's shit, the graphics are old, I don't know. I don't think it looks all that bad, I actually think it looks quite nice and smooth. I think it runs really smooth, it loads quickly. And the uh, yeah, the game just runs nicely. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, this might make you think that it's worth getting a Jaguar. It might not, but if you can pick one up on the cheap, then I would highly recommend it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Take care.